Hello and a very warm welcome to Glory Farm Primary School. My name is Miss May and I will be stepping up as early years phase leader from September while Mrs Whitney goes on her maternity leave. I'm going to share some key information with you now in regards to your child starting with us in September. I know that you may still have some unanswered questions once I finish the PowerPoint, so feel free to email us at eyfs at gloryfarmschool.co.uk with any questions which you still may have after watching this and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. So for many of you this will be a brand new experience, it will be your eldest child about to start school for the first time um, and we look forward to getting to know you and your children and it's very much about us working in partnership to support your child in their early education and also supporting you. Whatever your circumstances, we look forward to working with you and your family and your child for the next seven years. We understand how you feel, um, especially on that first day. We know that some of you will be quite anxious, but we want you to know that we want what's best for your child and that we will work with you to ensure that we provide this. We want your child to be safe and happy and to be well looked after and to have friends. Those are the most important things because if they're not happy, then they won't be ready to learn. So that's the most important thing for us. We want you to be confident in your choice of choosing our school. We are a good provider um, and you have chosen a school with many wonderful aspects. We have delightful children across all year groups. We are so proud of every single one of them and they all show excellent behaviour. We offer an exciting, broad and balanced curriculum with a wide range of additional opportunities. We have committed and talented staff who are here to ensure the best for you and your child. And we have a determined leadership team as well. We have really high expectations of ourselves and we are proud of our children's achievements. Um, some of these may be big achievements, but some of them may be small achievements, such as being able to write their name for the first time. But for us, it's all wonderful. We have positive parental views and our outcomes at Key Stage 1 are also public and significantly above um, national average overall for the past five years. So we look upon our school as a big community of children, parents, staff, governors and friends and um, we see ourselves as a massive family really and our core aim is to help your children and the children across the school to develop to become their full potential for the benefit of themselves and the rest of society. And as I mentioned previously, we will work hard with you to ensure that your child does reach their full potential. We recognise the pressures of being parents and we understand the significance of all of the decisions which you make every day. Um, from the food which they eat to the time which they go to bed and the people who you choose to look after your children and the opportunities which you provide for them. You are your child's first teachers and that's really important to remember and whilst as a school we do play a very important role um, in supporting your child it's only a very small part because your child really only spends about 14% of their life up to 16% in the school. So the majority they spend at home with you. So that's why it's important that we work together to ensure the best for your child. You know your children well, so um, your influence is greater than ours. And we are sure that you have lots of information which you would like to share with us. And we want to work in partnership with you to ensure that your child has successful outcomes. And because parental influence is seven times greater than the influence which we have at school, it's important that you commit to regular attendance from the start um, and get to understand the curriculum and how we work in school as well. So I'm just going to talk a bit now about the early years foundation stage. 
Um, there is a curriculum that is delivered for children aged between birth and five years and reception is the final stage of this curriculum. We ensure that there is a balance between the learning which takes place but also your child's development and the care which we provide and we do this by providing a range of activities and learning opportunities which promote a mixture of being adult-led but also it's important that there are child initiated opportunities as well. And we will make sure that we share with you your child's successes and progress whilst they start and continue on their learning journey with us. This slide um, just shows the nuts and bolts of our curriculum in early years. So as you can see, there are seven areas and each area is split into what we call ELGs. ELGs are called early learning goals and each area has around two to three. Um, so for example, if you're looking at communication and language, there is listening, attention and understanding. And then there's also speaking as well. By the end of the year, in order for your child to achieve a GLD, so that's a good level of development, they need to have achieved the early learning goals in communication and language, personal, social and emotional development, physical development, and then in addition, literacy and maths. So throughout our activities, we ensure that they are underpinned by communication and language. Um, that is vital and central to our curriculum, as well as focusing on personal, social and emotional development. But ultimately, if your child doesn't have the skills in communication and language, they won't be able to express themselves and how they're feeling when we're looking at um, personal, social and emotional development. So a typical day in the early years unit. It starts off by a warm welcome at the gate or the door by a member of staff. This isn't always the teacher. It might also be a teaching assistant. We like to take it in turns. Um, we encourage parents to leave their child at the gate or at the door rather than coming into the cloakroom. As we find this unsettles a child more, it's best as hard as it may be to kind of just hand them over to us, even if they're a little bit upset and we'll take over from there. Um, but we always try to let you know that they've settled down okay. We then go into self-registration and independently organising our belongings. So it's really important that your child starts to put away their bottle and their snack pot and their book bag and hang their coat upon their peg because all of this develops their independence ready for year one. We then have opportunities to explore and learn both indoors and outdoors and there will be a range of activities set up throughout the day and as mentioned before there is a balance of these activities being led by an adult but also um, scaffolded so that your child can initiate their own learning. So starting school, um, your children will be starting school between Friday the 3rd and Thursday the 9th of September and we've organised it so that it's staggered start in smaller groups. We did this last year and we found that it worked really well. It gave children an opportunity to get to know the environment and the adults in a smaller group rather than being overwhelmed by too much at once um, and it also helped them learn the rules and then on Friday the 10th of September we're really excited because then everybody will be in um, and it'll be wonderful for us all to be together. So how can you help your child with starting school in September? You can support them by teaching them how to use cutlery at home, helping them learn how to dress themselves independently. We always praise children for this even if they come to school with their clothes on back to front. Um, it's wonderful to see that they've tried to get dressed independently. We've been doing lots of this over the past year, but washing their hands is key and making sure that they understand that once they've been to the toilet or before they eat, they must wash their hands with warm water and soap. Helping them to learn to write their name 
and also developing their listening skills before they start in September. Um, so play listening games, go on walks, focus on what you can hear outside. All of those um, activities are really key to ensure that your child has the best start to school in September. There are a few things which your child will need when starting school. Uh, the first few things are a coat um, because as we know, in September, the weather can be very unpredictable. It might be glorious sunshine or it could be bucketing it down with rain. So it's always best to be prepared. So send them in with a coat. They should also be sent in with a water bottle and a snack. So we have morning snack, um, which is usually a piece of fruit or a piece of vegetable, which the child has brought in from home. And then also, if they can come to school on their first day in September with a bag, which is clearly labelled um, and full of some spare clothes because accidents do happen. So it's easier if we are prepared for those toileting accidents rather than having to ring you and then asking you to come and bring in spare clothes. If they do have an accident, we will always send their spare clothes or their accident clothes home. Um, and then you can just send them in with a fresh pair the next day so that we can replenish what they've used. Please make sure that their coat, their water bottle and their snack are all clearly labelled so that your child can access them independently without needing to ask an adult um, which bottle is theirs. It just helps, helps us with things as well. In September, we will be carrying out a reception baseline assessment. This is new for September 2021 and it is statutory. Um, it's nothing for you to worry about at all. Um, it should be no longer than 20 minutes and it's a short and simple check of your child's literacy, maths and communication language skills. But please don't worry, you do not need to prepare them for this. It's just a measurement of how we are supporting our children with their progression from reception to year six. Um, and we receive no data at all. It's stored on a centralized database and it will be carried out within the first six weeks. So once we know more, we will get in contact with you and inform you of the assessment dates nearer the time um, once we have finalized the class list. There is no pass mark um, for the reception baseline assessment and children should not know that it is an assessment either um, because it will just cause them unnecessary worry and they don't need to worry about it. It's a very simple set of activities. Um, but alongside this, we will also be carrying out our own similar checks and observations and these will happen through play-based tasks and through play-based learning to help inform our teaching and learning for the coming weeks once your child has started with us in September. It will help us to provide a more tailored and personalised curriculum to them. So from now until September, um, just a few dates for your diary. There are the stay and play sessions, so your child will either be attending our stay and play session on Monday the 14th of June or Wednesday the 16th of June and then we also have a whole school transition session um, which is taking place on Tuesday the 6th of July and we will let you know the details for that um, as soon as possible. So in September as I previously mentioned, there will be a staggered start for the first week of term. There will also be a phonics and reading workshop before October half term. Um, again, as soon as we know the date, we will inform you of this. Um, but it's key that you come to this because, especially if it's your eldest child, you will understand a lot about reading, um, especially the early stages of reading um, and how you can support your child with that at home. And also, just to let you know that we have an open door policy, so if anything's ever worrying you or if you've got a question, then please feel free to either ask us on the gate or get in contact with the office and then they will pass on your message to us and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. 
Um, as I've mentioned lots already, it's really important and key that we work together um, to support your child to ensure that they flourish as they continue on their learning journey. So I'm sure lots of you will want to know how you can help at home. So there are a few things on this slide which you can do in order to support your child. So the first thing is reading at home. Lots of shared story time. Children benefit greatly from being read to. So not expecting them to read, um, but reading to them at bedtime and at different points throughout the day, all that language which they pick up on. Establish good routines at home in preparation for September, making sure that they're going to bed early, um, having breakfast in the morning um, and keeping to good times as well. And consistency is key. Another thing which you can do at home is encourage your child's independence. So give your child the time which they need to be able to do things for themselves, whether that's try and dress themselves. It may be that they can put their shoes on if they've got Velcro shoes or they could help lay the tables um, at home. But just give them a little bit more independence so that they're ready to start in September. Communication. Keep talking to us and reading our newsletters, which will be sent home um, termly from September. And keep checking the website, Facebook and our school app for key information as well. As I've mentioned before, label anything that can be removed. Um, so cardigans, jumpers, coats, because um, children tend to put them down and if they're not named it can make it very difficult for us to recognise which cardigan belongs to who. Um, so it's key that everything is named so that your child can become more independent as well. If they take something off and they're not sure where they've left it they can check things to see if it's got their name in it. Practice changing into PE kit at home to get them ready for when we will eventually start changing for PE next year and make sure that they have a coat and wellies in school every day as we love to go outside in all weathers um, whether it's sunshine or whether it's raining um, because we love the experiences that it gives to our children and we love the outdoor outdoors area and our children especially love the mud kitchen so please make sure that they have wellies in school every day um, so finally i'm going to stop recording now um, obviously, this is pre-recorded after we've done the live virtual meeting. If I haven't answered any of your questions, please feel free to email the office um, or our EYFS account and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Please provide us with any relevant information through the Google form. Um, which the link has been sent to you if you haven't already done so um, because we gain a good picture of your, you and your child um, from that. Okay um, and finally we look forward to seeing you and your child um, at the transition stay in place um, over the next month and then also in September. We are very excited to get started um, for a new academic year. Anyway take care. Bye.